Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Let's now have Presidential Spokesperson Salvador Panelo. Good morning, sir. Good morning to all of you. Questions, MPC? Christine, question? Sir, just on the budget, uh, there's, there are fears now that the 29 proposed budget won't, uh, won't be passed and it will be an enacted budget next year. Um, is Malacanang doing anything to um, maybe prod, prod uh, its allies, the House, to at least uh, make sure that the budget is passed? We're only speculating that it will not be passed. We have submitted a, a budget proposal, so it's the House call. But you're not, uh, the palace <clears throat> is not doing anything to at least talk to them para mapas yung budget? Well, certainly, certainly. Yes. Who, who is talking with them, <clears throat> sir? Oh, the liaison officer. There is a liaison office between Alakanyang and Congress. So what's the message of the palace to, to Congress right now? There's one again. So any message from the palace to Congress in, in, in the passage of this budget? Well, the House knows that this is the budget proposal of the palace. And so they will have to do their job. If there are questions on the budget, they will raise them and we will respond to them. And uh, on the end of the palace, you're convinced it's, it's, it's convinced that we're going to pass this budget. Oh, of course. Follow up, Henry Uri. Microphone, thank you. Secretary, uh, follow up sa budget. <clears throat> um, sabi ni Congressman uh, Andaya, House Majority Leader Rolando Andaya, kanya na de delayed, kanya na delayed yung budget sa Congress. It's because meron daw pong. Sabi niya, a number of very unusual belated requests by President Rodrigo Duterte and certain cabinet members, not for insertions by member of the House of Representatives. Hindi do ho dahil sa pork barrel, kundi yung budget request mismo. Ang sabi niya, very unusual belated request by President Duterte. May ganito ho bang request ang Pangulo sa Kongreso? That is the perception of Secretary or Congressman Andaya. But any question regarding that, if raised, will be responded to by Budget Secretary Ben Jokno. So wala hong request ang Pangulo mismo sa Kongreso na budget. Uh, may binabanggit siya para daw po ito sa mga specifically pabahay sa mga sundalo. I think Budget Secretary Jokno will be more knowledgeable on that. But as far as the president is concerned, may run ba siya? May... If the president is, is instruction to Secretary Jokno as contained in the budget proposal, then that is the situation. Do you think President uh, Duterte will do that? <laughs> you know, I cannot be reading his mind. If he has that, then Secretary Jokno would know that. Oh, thank you. Okay, may follow up on budget. Other issue. No more? Okay. Please, CN CNN Philippines. Hi, sir. Yes. Good afternoon. Good yes, afternoon. it's going to be the anniversary of the Maguindanao massacre. It's been nine years since it happened. Um, what is <clears> the gover <throat> What is the reaction of the government, or um, what do you think of the pace of the trial, given that until now, after nine years, there's still no conviction? Well, we're not <clears throat> we're not surprised that the wheels of justice in this country run so slow. Many cases take so long, but what is important to us is. Justice will prevail. Rule of law will have to be observed. Regardless of who the persons are involved in any particular case. Sir, but is Malacanang um, doing anything to, I don't know, to speak to the judiciary to follow up on uh, this case? The DOJ is the one responsible for prosecuting the case. And so it is doing its job, its level best, to speed up the prosecution of the case. But with the talks of, of uh, with, within 
um, the officer, official, sir, um, do we expect any resolution anytime soon? It depends on the stage of the case. It depends. And it depends on the prosecutors. Thank you. Okay. Follow up. Chona? Chona, you. Sir, as a former lawyer of the Ampatuans, um, tingin niyo makukonvict ba sila? You, we, can only, always, we can always speculate. It's, you know, the courts will always rule on the basis of evidence. That has been the, the rule and that has been the training of all lawyers. Follow up. Other issue. May follow up pa sa Ampatuan? No more? Other issue, Joyce? Sir, um, marami po yung nakapuna or nagsasabi na there could be a breach of protocol during the mm. state visit of Chinese President Xi Jinping. Particularly, um, some netizens pointed out the placing of flags. Um, an example would be, sir, your honor guard daw po during the trooping is carrying mm. the flag of mm. China and not the presidential uh, flag. Uh, former Presidential Communications Undersecretary Manuel Quezon said the President, of course, can um, break any tradition, but there could be a dramatic statement. Was there a dramatic statement to the placing of the flags? Or the, the head of protocol, I was talking to him, and he said he would be issuing an official statement on the matter. Robert Boring. But sir, sa part po ng, ng, ng president, meron ba siyang order? Meron ba siyang um, any meaning to that? None that I know. What I know is it's the protocol who will be explaining whether there is breach or not. And so, if there is a breach, why? Uh, but as of this point, we cannot categorically say that there is no breach of protocol. I am not the protocol officer. It has to be Robert Bory who would be issuing an official statement on the matter. Within this day, sir, they will... I think statement. so because I was talking to him yesterday and he said he would be issuing a statement. No, nakausap niyo sa inyo siya, sir. Yeah, I talked to him on the phone. Talk to him. Hindi niya po sinabi sa inyo, sir, na there is no breach of protocol. We, we didn't, uh, I was asking any comment because you were asking, so I forwarded it. Please give uh, any comment on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in his response is, we are investigating and we'll be issuing a statement. Okay, follow up. Other issue, may follow up sa other issue, Darrell. Hi, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Sir, the palace released today the nomination paper of uh, Senator Honasan as the next DICT yeah. secretary. May we know, sir, the primary consideration of the president for appointing him? Again, the, always the base of the president is trust and confidence and uh, integrity. So, does the competence. Does the palace believes that he is capable for? Oh, the definitely, job? definitely. Because, uh, sir, because the 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 law that created the ICT has uh, specific qualifications for the department secretary, uh, under secretary and assistant secretary. One of which is seven years of competence and expertise in uh, information and communications technology, information technology service management. Information security management, cybersecurity, data privacy, e-commerce, or human capital development in the ICT sector. Do you think that uh, Senator Honasan is uh, capable in any of these uh, fields? It is not for us to decide on that. It will be the Commission on Appointments. There will be vetting there. There will be a hearing. And you will have to respond to questions on the on his competence. So, you, sir, you are open <clears throat> to the possibility of him not being confirmed despite his stature as a senator, sir? Well, when the president nominates, <clears throat> it's for the commission of appointments to approve the nomination. Thank you, sir. MPC questions? Okay na tayo? Okay. Yeah, please. Follow up. Microphone. So regarding the JVA draft, a lot of people the are the JVA draft, um, oil exploration um, joint venture draft, sir. Yes. Um, there are news reports and a lot of people are asking, bakit parang medyo elusive, sir, yung um, paglalabas ng JVA? Because yesterday there were reports na nagpipingpong, the DOE saying to get it from DFA, then DFA says, 
um, you should get it from uh, DOE. So why is the document very elusive and not readily available to the public? What I know is that yesterday was the last day, and they must have been very busy attending to the last day events. But as I said, we will be issuing that. In fact, I made a request already. Sir, how DFA. soon can we <clears throat> expect the final and official um, document to be seen or I to be released to the public? I suppose it's the DFA secretary will be releasing that. Okay, so we'll you. have to ask him. Okay, sir. Thank you. I follow up, sa Okay, uh, Sandra. Sandra, long time no see. Hi, sir. Um, so reaction lang because uh, DFA Secretary Teddy Boy Luxin wasn't happy with your statement mm. na parang uh, it's no big deal whether uh, China drafted uh, the, the uh, MOU. What can you say about that, sir? What is your reaction? I'm, I'm not sure whether Secretary Luxin <clears throat> read <clears throat> the transcript of what happened in this news briefing. I also am not sure whether or not the writer of that story gave an accurate reporting of what I said. What I said, and I will quote the, the transcript. It was asked by Ina and Dulong. He said, there are concerns, or some sectors, sir, are implying that it was China that drafted whatever deal or agreement will be signed. And my response was, oh, it doesn't matter who drafted it. I don't know if this is the only sentence that was reported by the news writer, and this is only the portion that Secretary Luxin read. But I went beyond that. I said, as far as we're concerned, you give us a draft, and we will go over it. We have to see whether this is legal or not, whether it's beneficial to us or not. And then Ina Andaling said, so we're okay with China dictating whatever will be the contents of the deal? I said, no. I said, even if China drafts it, it has to go over us. We have to review that in the same manner that if we draft it, it will have to pass through them too. This is the situation. When there is a Contract negotiation, there are two parties. The standard practice is you will have to agree first on the terms and conditions of that agreement. And when you already decided on the terms, then somebody will draft it. It's either any of the parties. And after that draft, it has to go over the other party. And we'll look over whether or not the contents of your agreement are incorporated therein. Otherwise, the party will object to that or will revise it until they reach an agreement on what exactly will be the final draft. Okay, MPC, follow up, Ace. Other issue. May follow up pa sa China? Ace. Microphone. Secretary, tungkol din sa isang China project, uh, the UNESCO has warned that uh, San Agustin Church and three other Baroque churches around the country may be delisted from the World Heritage List because of the Binondo Intramuros Bridge across Pasig River. What do you say to those concerns? Because it might intrude into the so-called buffer zone though. As you said, it may encroach. But I was listening in the news story yesterday that the contractor is saying that it will not. So we, we don't know exactly whether or not it will. But because if, if it will, then certainly it is right to object. So is it safe to say that you would uh, object or you would no longer push through with it if it is discovered that it would indeed uh, not intrude? Not necessarily not push through because you may, Adjust. You may move the you locations may, okay. to maybe 100 meters away. Mm -hmm. so, I don't think that will be a problem. So definitely, Malacanang will not allow yung intrusion? Oh, definitely, because that is a world heritage. Okay. It's part of our history. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. No more questions? 
Okay na? Okay, thank you, MPC. Thank Hindi, you. Hindi, Okay. Ah, sorry. Sir, may I know the President's comment on the traffic that was created because of the visit of uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping? Does he have any comment on the traffic, the heavy traffic that was experienced in that? None that I know. But, you know, I think that that should be <clears throat> understandable given the fact that the, the Manila area was, the work was suspended. Hence, all the motorists would be not passing here because of the security. So they have to converge in the Makati area and other places. And there would be traffic. All of us, me too. But sir, there were unannounced, uh, unannounced road closures. So, and the PSG and MMDA uh, seem to point fingers at each other because of so several motorists and passengers were caught unprepared by the road closures. Well, we have to live with that because the concern of the state would be the security of a visiting head of state. Okay, sir, because the president seemed to be irked by the traffic that was caused during the visit of Pope, Fran uh, Pope, Pope Francis, so... I guess, but I guess if you compare the traffic yesterday or the other day as against the Pope's visit, there is a whale of a difference. That time really took us six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. Not this one. This one was two hours only. Oh, I took you. me about that in coming here. MPC, no more? Okay, na? Christine? Back to the budget. <clears throat> Senator yes. Laxon is also saying that Meron daw port insertions. That's why na delay sa house yung budget. Uh, is the palace aware of this? And will you allow yung yung ganitong port insertion sa budget? Of course, the the senator, the president is from the very set. It will never allow anything like that sort. But precisely, the proposal is being submitted to Congress, and it is the duty of Congress to go over it, examine it, and then raise objections and will not approve. So there are no port insertions, sir, as far as the palace is As far as I concerned. know. Okay, sir. Okay. MBC? No more? Okay. Thank you, Presidential thank you, thank Spokesperson you. Salvador Panela. Thank you, MBC. Back to our studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.